So I think like many people, with the extreme disappointment and issues with the launch of the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, I found myself craving a working multiplayer Battlefront experience, which naturally brought me back to DICE's Battlefront 2 from 2017. And I figured with all the attention around Battlefront right now, a lot of people are probably wondering about the current state of Battlefront 2, so they can return to it or possibly even buy it for the first time in 2024. To say this game has been on a wild journey since it's come out feels like an understatement, but with the game often on sale and very cheap, as of right now on Steam it's like $4.79, so it may very well be worth checking out for a lot of people in 2024, especially for that price. You're getting a lot of content for only 4 or 5 bucks. Now this is my first time returning to the game in about two years, I believe. I used to play this game so much when it was still supported and receiving regular updates. I played from launch, being the massive Battlefront fan I am, and put hundreds of hours into the game over the years. But when EA cut support for the game to focus those resources and manpower to Battlefield 2042, I stopped playing as often and kinda assumed the game would slowly die out. But because Star Wars is such a massive popular franchise, and Battlefront 2 grew to be so beloved by the community, it has managed to maintain a pretty consistent player base even four years after EA cut live service support for the game. That's right, it's already been four years. Of all of EA's terrible decisions when it comes to some of their games, cutting support and updates for Battlefront 2 while the game was at its peak is still one of the ones that hurts and stings the most to this day. And then hearing that they shot down a potential Battlefront 3 adds even more salt to the wound. But the fact that the game has managed to keep a pretty consistent player base that's now hit a bit of a resurgence due to the outrage over the classic collection speaks volumes to how many people love the game and Battlefront as an IP. I also find it pretty hilarious that the classic collection has so many people now praising this game and looking at it with very fond eyes. Well, when this Battlefront 2 released and had one of the most infamously bad launches in video game history, with all the microtransactions and pay-to-win structure, everyone was looking back on the original Battlefronts with fond eyes. As this tweet perfectly encapsulated, we have come full circle. It's funny how these things work out. Now, DICE's Battlefront still never really got that close to the amount of content in the originals, although through major updates and expansions, it majorly improved, and I think the big Clone Wars update that added Geonosis, along with Anakin, Obi-Wan, Dooku, and Grievous as playable heroes, is when the game really started to hit its peak and make its comeback. The fact that Battlefront 2 was able to bounce back from one of the worst game launches in video game history is pretty insane. But anyways, that's all the past. In this video, I'm focusing on how the game holds up today, and if it's worth coming back to or possibly buying for the first time. And in FYI, I do play on PC, and this game is not cross-play, so the server population and everything is gonna vary if you're on consoles. Although, I would imagine there may be even more players on consoles. That's usually how it is. But I was pretty pleasantly surprised at how many people are still playing this game. Again, I definitely think the Classic Collection's abysmal launch has actually brought people back to this game. The game has around 2 to 3,000 concurrent players on Steam, and keep in mind, most people play this game through EA, like me, so that's not even taking those players into account. And even so, this game still has way more active players than the Classic Collection already that just came out last week. But I was able to find full lobbies fairly easily on the most popular game modes, not every game mode has many people playing. Most people are on Supremacy, Galactic Assault, Heroes vs. Villains, Hero Showdown, which are the best modes anyway, so that was completely fine for me. For Supremacy, it's a little bit harder to find games that aren't in the Age of the Republic era. I was able to find a full game in the Age of Rebellion, but it did take a while for the lobby to fill up. But I usually prefer to play in the Age of Republic anyway, so that wasn't a huge inconvenience either. But honestly, if the servers and population was something you were worried about when considering returning to this game, or even just buying it for the first time, there's actually a decent amount of people playing right now. And I mean, it's been four years, since support for the game stopped, and it still manages to hold a player base, so I don't think the game is fully going to die out anytime soon. 
so long as the servers exist and it's the most recent Battlefront entry, I think this game will always have a player base. That's how dedicated Battlefront fans are. The lobbies weren't super sweaty either, like they usually are on older games, where all the people still playing are like super high levels who are just insane and dominate every lobby, kind of sucking the fun out of it for any new player. And while there are definitely some max levels in some lobbies, there was a good chunk of new players and lower levels as well, which surprised me. Again, even on PC, which is usually known for having a bunch of tryhards on games like this. So I think a new player could still definitely have fun without being constantly dominated by people who have been playing non-stop for the past seven years. And that's just for multiplayer. Some people may just want to play the single player modes. There's a bunch of co-op missions, which I was actually able to find games for as well. There's an entire campaign, which truthfully the story in that isn't that great, but it still has pretty fun moments and can be quite immersive. Again, there's a lot of content and a lot of things to do that are well worth it for only $4 in my opinion. I mean, the game itself is still incredibly fun, chaotic, immersive, and it still looks fantastic. Star Wars fans can be so passionate and fun to play with as well. Like in one game where I was playing as Obi-Wan and ran into Anakin, and we were just going back and forth with emotes. It's just an experience you don't get with a lot of other games and fan bases. And for a 7 year old game, the visuals haven't aged at all. This is still one of the best looking Star Wars games you can play. The characters, the effects, the maps all look fantastic, all the different skins as well. Could you only just imagine if this game was still being supported and updated like other big, long-running multiplayer games? The amount of content we'd have by now would be insane. I always wanted this game to have Galactic Conquest like the originals, especially online Galactic Conquest, that would be a dream come true, but that never happened unfortunately. But all of this to say, if you can get Battlefront 2 for a cheap price on sale, which it's on sale a lot, then I absolutely still recommend it in 2024. Just returning to the game for this video has made me want to keep playing it consistently again. To me, this game had one of the best comebacks I've seen in any video game with a bad launch, along with Cyberpunk. I really hope we get another Battlefront game someday, although at this point it may just be another reboot of the series because it seems like EA is slowly separating themselves from Star Wars, wanting to mainly focus on their original IPs. Battlefront fans have been very poorly treated as of late, but at least this game is still a lot of fun and still going on fairly strong nearly 7 years after its initial release. That's my opinion though, let me know if you still play Battlefront 2 in 2024, or if this video was helpful in your decision to either return to the game or check it out for the first time. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. A special thank you to my members for supporting me, and other than that, thanks for watching everybody, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.